Hey everybody! Today I am going to show you guys how to do a traditional Peking Opera mask makeup. Um, actually with the Peking Opera, the historical characters in the traditional Peking Opera are provided with different types of facial makeup. And they can reflect the identity, status, personality, and appearance of the characters. And therefore it can intensify the artistic appeal on stage. So each color uh, in the makeup denotes a different uh, characteristic. For example, in the makeup I'm going to show you how to do, there's three colors, black, white, and red. So black represents loyalty and up, uprightness. And there's two kinds of whites, a watery white suggests trickery and malevolence, while oily white expresses self-conceited and domineering characters. And lastly, the red depicts utter devotion, loyalty, righteousness, and bravery. So here is the picture of what I'm going to show you. I'm going to go through all the steps with you on how to do the makeup yourself. Um, and then at the end, you'll see the final product. The first thing I'm going to do is to wash up and make my face a clean palette. I'm going to make sure I get all this makeup off and wash my face thoroughly so there's no dirt and no oil to mess up my makeup. Then after I'm done that, I'm going to go put on my base. So we'll be right back. Okay, so now that I've put on my base and got my hair out of my face, we're ready to start the makeup. I have this particular um, makeup kit that's from the Halloween store. Anybody can get it. It's only about $3. And it comes with all the colors you're going to need, plus a sponge and a brush if you don't already have them. So I'm going to first start off with the white to do my whole face white like the mask starts off with. So to do the white, I'm going to use this white color right here. I've got my little makeup applicator sponge. And I'm just going to dip the sponge into a thing of water. Just clean water from the tap, whatever. Just a little dab. And you're going to use a little bit more water as you go. So my sponge is just a little bit damp. I'm going to take the white right here and just kind of swirl around a little bit. Then now that I've got it on my sponge, I'm going to start doing my face white. So I'm going to go do this real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now as you can see how lovely this white face looks, uh, I have it all over my face except for the chin area, because it's the only area that was that is not painted at all in the makeup. So the next thing I'm going to do is start outlining those crazy lines that you see on the... Um, this area here that come around into a big loop and then around the mouth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my brush in water, just make it a little bit damp so that it has some structure to it. And then I'm going to start with my black. So now what I'm going to do, instead of just going for it right away and coloring everything in, I'm just going to do a light outline. Just in case I make a little flub, then I don't have to completely start my makeup over again. So I'm going to start by doing little dots too, since this this um, makeup is very symmetrical, so I'm gonna do dots to make sure that it's even. Do this one looks like it starts about here. See a little dot there, and I'm gonna do a dot on the same side on the other side of the same. Spot. See that? See how that's a little bit off? Now if I did that, my makeup like that then it would look bad. So I'm just going to do another dot a little further up. Just kind of... So now that I have my points on my head, I'm going to do the points by my eyebrow. So this gives me basically a template to work from. Then this dot is going to be like my center dot. So now my, my lines should be pretty much even. Might be a little bit off, but you know, my face isn't symmetrical, so that's gonna be a, a little bit of work to do. So I'm gonna start by drawing out part of this line here. So now that's a little crooked, but since you wanna make sure that your brush 
you push you don't be afraid of the brush push down on it so that you'll get a straighter line see how much straighter that is than the first time i was afraid if you use a light too light of a hand then what will happen is that your lines are going to be wavy because you're not you're not putting enough pressure but the more pressure you put down the more of a straight line that you'll get. now in the design which i'm just realizing now it thins out at the bottom which obviously i didn't do so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get my little sponge out again and kind of make it gradually thin So, eventually I'm going to make those lines thicker, but we're just doing our outline right now. So then, this line goes around the nose in a circle underneath the eye. Right. So now that I have that basic outline on the bottom, I can go over it again with a heavier hand. So now, I'm going to do the top part, which comes from the corner of the eye. So now that we've got that outline, that's our basic right eye outline. Um, you know, ideally this would connect here. So that's what it's going to look like. And then later on when we're done outlining, I'll go back and color all of this black because that's how it is on the outline. So now I'm going to do the other side. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to start outlining the mouth, which kind of looks like almost like a cat. We have the center of the lip here is black, and we've got uh, almost like a parenthesis around either side of the mouth, and it goes up towards the nose. So I'm going to start by doing this part right here. And it comes all the way down to the upper lip, which is one of the reasons that I left the... Um, Upper, I actually put white on my upper lip to give it a little bit of, um, to help it stay better. Then this line is going to go out. down. Okay. So now that that's basically outlined, I can go back and start coloring it in. Okay, so now that our black is basically done here, we can start on the red pieces. So if you have the same brush, you want to make sure that you um, either switch out your brush or clean it off before you start with a new color. If not, it's going to get all muddied and look horrible. 
Alright, so now that my brush is clean, I'm gonna wet it and put it on my lovely red here. So, just to make my life easier, I'm gonna start off with my lips. It's just the bottom lip. Just like applying lipstick. If you want it to be more dramatic, and make it go down a little further. Than your actual lip, like that. So the last and final piece of this makeup is the little red um, figure or symbol in the middle. And I'm going to do that next. And I'm also going to use my little points thing to do this too. Something like that. Um, my forehead is not big enough for this apparently. Um, and I might have moved over, I might, the lines might be a little bit thicker than they're shown. Um, but I'm going to redo this so that it looks right and then come back. Okay, so basically this is our finished product. Um, it didn't come out exactly how I wanted it to. It was a little rough with the paint that I used. It's very greasy and not necessarily the best type of makeup to use or something of this caliber or complexity. Especially for something like this is going to be used for performance that's going to last a while. This would melt right off. But we use it to get the idea and you can kind of see how the lines fit. Not exactly as the picture, but um, this is my version of a peeking opera mask. And basically the only thing I would do different would be to switch the makeup and use um, different brushes, different sized brushes. So then the lines would be cleaner and I will take a better picture so that you can see it in its full glory. So thanks for watching and bye.